everybody, this is Perch. Uh, you know me, I always like to make money, so I'm always interested to hear offers that come through to the Perch Show. So here's one. Let's see what we got. We got commercial offer for YouTube. Okay. What's the offer here? It says, uh, hello, I'm Mateus. Mateus? Mat Matasius? I'm not sure here. I'm, Mat I'm Matasius, and I represent the NFT Project Champions Ascension. So Project Champions Ascension. I, I'd be... I have no idea what that is, but it sounds impressive that I've got the representative of NFT Project Champions Ascension. So what do we have? We would like to offer you cooperation in advertising. All right. What is the cooperation? We are willing to pay you $1,700 for a 35-second video at the beginning of your video. Well, cool. I'm, I'm actually giving you a freebie right now. This is going to be longer than 35 seconds. Let's see what they say. Let's 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 get the bait from the hook. It says NFT is now a very promising topic, so you can raise a lot of money on it. If you help promote our project, we will be able to conclude long-term agreements with you where the fees will be much higher. If you are interested, we will send you video materials, seeing which you tell me whether you are ready to cooperate or not. If you're interested, please reply to this email. And this is Matatius, Commercial Manager of Champions Ascension. So uh, I'm interested. Send me, send me, send it to me. I have to email you. I, I don't think I want to do that, but I'm interested. Let me know. How can I milk my audience? I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I promote valuable things to my audience who also cares about the NFT. I am I am highly interested in your offer. Please, please let me have it. I too love Champions Ascension. It is, it is what I think about at night. When I am sleeping with my wife, I am thinking about Champions Ascension. That is how near and dear it is to my heart and other parts of my anatomy. Please send me money. There you go. All right. So uh, second question here. This could be a three-question video. It's amazing. It says, uh, hey, Perch, I can't tell. Are you a SJW woke libtard or alt-right? Please explain. Um, all right. Let me think through this answer. Uh, fuck you. That's my answer. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I, why, why, why do you people do this? Seriously, why do you do this? Do you really think the world is separated into two groups? The, the alt-right and libtards, is that, that's, that's what we've come to. There, there are only two, that's what we're playing with. You, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I, I understand that education in America has gone completely to shit and that, uh, that, that, all, that the social media has rotted our brains and everything else, but you, you, you have to be kidding me. You, you know that the majority of the country, the vast majority of the country, does not think in such terms as alt-right and libtard. Like, we, we, the majority of the, the country just would like somebody who is reasonably educated and not a crazy effing maniac to be in charge of the country. That's, that's kind of what we prefer. We would all sleep better at night uh, thinking that, you know, we're not going to wake up to random laws that just F up parts of our lives and possibly maybe bombs going off in other countries and also not sending all of our money overseas. Whether you're funding the, you know, in whatever war it happens to be, we kind of just like to, you know, have some shit taken care of. When we're driving down our Texas roads filled with potholes, we're thinking, hey, maybe, uh, maybe you don't need to uh, go get revenge for your daddy in Iraq and you can spend some of that money filling potholes, or maybe you do not need to fund Ukraine all the money you're funding them, or, or you know, hey, uh, I understand. By the way, this is what people don't understand about Trump and the America First. They go, I, well, what a selfish uh, ideology. Not really. It's, it's, it's people driving down the road going, you know what? Uh, this road's kind of fucked up, and I, I see news stories about how bridges are falling apart. Uh, the, the, fa the craziest part, and then I will get on to comics, I promise. But hey, mean you've been listening to this channel for a while. You know what you're in for. I it, it, this is fool me for you, the person listening to this, and I'm talking about you, Mumbles. This is like fool me 342 times. You know what you're in for at this point. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I the the whole America First policy. It's like, look, uh, yeah, 
You want to, you want your house to be clean. You want the area around you to be clean. You, in theory, care about the rest of the world, sure, but that's that's a long way away from here. And and while you're happy to kind of fund it, you know, when you 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 when you open up CNN and CNN is breathlessly reporting on bridges crumbling into the in you know for no apparent reason and cars going all haywire and infrastructure falling apart and all this shit going on in the U.S. which sells clicks. People get click on that. It's like, find out which state has toxic lead poisoning in the water. It's like, okay, I'll click on that. You guys promoted that. And then somebody comes around and it's like, hey, we're going to worry about America's problems first, like that lead in the water thing that you guys are reporting on. And CNN goes, how in the world, how did this guy get popular? How did this happen? Like, bitch, you know how this happened. You know, what, what do you think? Like, you, you, when you report on the problems in the country... And then somebody comes around and goes, hey, we're going to focus on the problems in the country first. And you're like, what a selfish asshole. Like, come on. Seriously? Anyway. All right. I, <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's, it's clearly midterm time. So, you know, here we are. Um, anyway, I'm going to respond to that NFT mail and see what happens. That's, that's what I'm going to do. All right. Here's, here's, uh, here's a comic bit of the video. So, you know, for those of you who are listening... Video starts at six minutes and like 40 seconds. There you, there you have it. But uh, again, I, I have to believe that the subscribers keep growing to this channel. I have no idea why. And But you must, there's a percentage of you that must like listening to this bullshit. That's the only thing I can uncover. So here we have it. It says, uh, this mail is seriously, what the fuck is it with the food? So it says, hey, Perch, discussing the whole Kyle Rayner shit, but really comics on the whole. And I'm sorry this is going to be a profane rant. And I'm sorry this is going to... Uh, sorry, I'm reading the same line twice. Uh, but what in the actual fuck is this big two obsession with food? As someone who has been reading comics for over a decade, food and comics don't go together. And speaking as someone who has lost the occasional comics to a coffee spill, I think food and drink and comics are almost mutually exclusive. You make a good point, sir. I agree. If it has moisture, it's the bane of comics' existence. Yeah, comics don't like to be moist. Yeah, moist. How about that? Moist comics. No, it doesn't work. I hate seeing the stores where the clerk rings up your comics with a greasy taco in his free hand. Yeah, no shit. I'd never let my employees eat food at the counter. Never. And there were definitely people who were like, hey, this, uh, this, this uh, perch guy, this store owner is a Nazi. I'm like, this was, of course, before Nazi got to be popularized as a term. Like, you can't eat food. So, yeah, I'm, I'm the Nazi who won't let you eat food. I would joke around like that. Today, of course, I would be, of course, run out of the country for saying such things. But anyway, but be that as it may. Yeah, you don't eat food when you're serving people. I imagine, by the way, everything's deteriorating. I guarantee you, you're going to go into an Arby's at some point, And you're going to be at that counter ordering your Arby's. And sure enough, the guy behind the counter is going to be like eating one of those greasy, dripping bacon and cheddar sandwiches while he's taking your order, and you're going to be grossed out. But anyway, that this is your future if you eat at Arby's. I, I'm, I've, I've had it, by the way. I've, I've joked around for a long time. People are like, oh, Perch is un-American if he doesn't like Arby's. No, Perch is pro not dying. That's what Perch is pro of. Arby's is gross. We've all joked around with it. Joke's over. Fuck Arby's. Anyway. All right. Um, Back to this mail. I guarantee you the letter writer did not, like, I, I see your rant and I'll raise you another one. Anyway, it says, uh, I hate seeing this. Okay, so what dumb fuck comes into the conclusion that comic readers want food in comic art? I just rewatched the original Star Wars trilogy and the masterpiece that it is. I found myself thinking, why don't we see, see Han Solo uh, munching on a space burger? Actually, no, I didn't. That's a great point. You look at a lot of these classic movies. By the way, including movies that like Citizen Kane and, and Gone with the Wind and, and even further back, like they did not spend excessive time showing these characters just eating and fucking around with food. It's it's a stupid thing. I, I don't know why. You know, the easy answer is uh, several of the comic writers are morbidly obese and they just the food is on their minds all the time. But that's not completely true. Although Tom King looked horrible last time I saw him. But anyway, I, they, several of these writers, I mean, like Donnie Cates is thin as a rail. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I have no idea what he's putting into his diet to keep him so thin and skinny. But, uh, it, like, what, what is it with the food? 
nobody finds this. Is it? Is it truly? I asked an editor once, and they go, well, yeah, I'm tired of the food too, but ever since the Avengers did that, uh, that, that joke about going and getting a, what, what, the, what did they get? Uh, it wasn't a falafel. I, I mean, I don't know. It, it, basically, going and getting food at the end of the first Avengers movie, everybody's been really obsessed with that being the iconic moment of all of comics. And I'll tell you, I didn't wait around in the end credits to even get to that scene. I, I didn't. I, I could give it, the Avengers eating food silently after the Battle of New York. Like, that's an iconic scene. Ah, Jesus, no. All right, so we'll finish up this mail. It says, if you wanted to convince me, sorry, if you want to convince people that Comics Gate are right and that the big two tokenized minorities, this is how you do it. By the way, that what's about to follow in this paragraph is, I, 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 is pretty genius. And I know, I like I try and I look at things balanced. I I, I think, but this I think this this next paragraph is dead, one hundred percent correct. Okay, in in all in in everything it's about to say. So for all of you people, I Birch never takes a stand. This is me taking a stand. I think this next paragraph, which I'm going to read without interruption, is a hundred percent correct. Here we go. Um, let me start. It says, if you want to convince people that comic skate are right. And the big two tokenized minorities. This is how you do it. You make one of the first Latino superheroes, Kyle Rayner, hold a bag of fucking tacos in space. Jesus Christ signed a dude who is part Hispanic. I don't want to see Hispanic superheroes going around with tacos any more than anyone wants to see Shang-Chi taking a summer job at Panda Express. That's so fucking stupid. And this is the crap that makes me feel Zach was right a couple years ago when he said comics were becoming a lifestyle brand that caters to people who pretend to like comics. I can't imagine the annoyance that artist must have felt when they told him to abandon that great image that he had and add in some fucking tacos. Why not do a, a cover of Blade slicing into watermelon or Storm holding a plate of fried chicken while you're at it? Fuck me, exact same vibe. I want to uh, see dragons, swords, guns, spaceships, and the like. Not something I can get on a street corner, which I suspect is the closest these editors have ever come to Hispanic culture. Okay, uh, that's the end of the mail. So, uh, good rant. Um, I, I can't... I, uh, look, I, I mean, a lot of people can disagree with that. You can argue with that. You're 100% right. 100%. I, I look. I, if I, I don't think you always point the the finger at like this is racist, that's racist, all that kind of stuff. But seriously, have some fucking self awareness. They have these characters who are non white, Hispanic, black, uh, you know, Indian, indigenous people, uh, Muslim, other things, and God damn it, they throw in this stereotypical food. Like we can boil down this entire culture. To, you know, this, you know, uh, Robbie Reese likes empanadas. I mean, that, that's, that's the level of complexity of these people. And, and quite bluntly, nothing screams, I am a misinformed, have never traveled anywhere, completely hillbilly, podunk, you know, white writer than, hey, I know, let's have the, uh, the, Native American character eating fry bread because that's all they do. They just sit around fucking eating fry bread all day because that's uh, that's what they do. That's what those people do. Ser I mean, uh, in all honesty, you joke. But if the image of watermelon and fried chicken had not become such a racist stereotype, I guarantee you some of these writers would be plastering that in with all the black characters these comic books have. It is, it is so absolutely uh, to me the most racist aspect of comics the most the consistently racist aspect is not whatever the hell the crowdfunding people are doing it's marvel and dc when they do some of their uh voices comics and the bride comics and they they lean into the most basic and and quite bluntly inaccurate stereotypes possible I moved down here to Texas. I don't particularly like it, but it's fine. 
um, there's a heavy Latino, Latina population here in Texas. You know what you do not see? I, I, I have yet, I've been here for now several months. I've yet to see a Latino guy walking along the road with a giant sombrero hat eating tacos. There are lots of places down here in Texas that are taco places, like Torchy's Tacos. They have tacos. You go into that place, you know who you see? You see white people. Some black people. Maybe you, you may see a, a, a Latino person in there, but it's, it's white people in there. You know who gets most excited about Taco Tuesday here in, in Texas? White people. It, it, there's not th this idea like, you know, and I go, my wife in particular, loves Hatch Chili, loves a lot of uh, Mexican food. She grew up uh, near, you know, near Mexico. Absolutely loves good, authentic Mexican food. We go to Mexican grocery stores. We pick up plenty of food that is, uh, you know, Latino, Mexican food. Uh, it, it, there is there is no, again, there, the stuff that you see in comic books is, is the absolute stereotypical racist as shit version of these cultures. Be uh, so sorry. So I had to go on that a little bit, but you do have to, you do have to laugh. I am somebody who has traveled the world extensively. I have actually traveled to all seven continents. It took a lot of work to get to that last one. If you travel the world a lot, what you start to notice is that the stereotypes you see in comics around how the world operates is nothing like how the world operates. If you go over to, uh, to the UK, what you will notice is, you know, some good Indian restaurants talking about food. You'll notice some really shitty traffic pretty consistently. You'll notice, uh, you know, a, a heavy dependence on the tube and on various rail. You will not notice a bunch of people walking around in like three-piece suits going, I say, sir, how are you on this fine morn? I shall challenge you to a duel. Like, like you people write like morons. So, and then the other part of your mail, yeah, stop with the obsession of food. That's another good analogy. Han Solo, like, like who wants the fuck wants to see him eat? Even if he's going to hang out in the canteen, he's getting a drink. Like, like if they were making that movie today, they'd be like, Han Solo would be there with Chewbacca going, you know, the local delicacy in Tatooine is to have uh, chips and salsa made out of banta meat. And, uh, and uh, you know, and, and you'd get a whole speech about that shit. And you're like, no, Han Solo's just sitting. It's unclear what he's even doing. He's sitting down. He's like having a drink, hanging out with himself. Up comes Greedo. Han Solo shoots him in the dick. That's, that's, that you don't, you don't go on a whole side quest of food. That's stupid. I mean, the only time you're supposed to deal with food is like what Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom do. You use it as gag where everybody goes to dinner and you're eating monkey brains and it's, it's super racist and hilarious. I mean, no, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. It was hilarious actually. That, that whole bit is, is still one of the funniest ones. And if I ever want to gross out my kids, I put on Temple of Doom and I'm like, hey, look at these people are eating for dinner. And, and my daughter's like, they don't really eat this. I'm like, no, of course they don't. But it's funny. Would you like to, you know, would you like to be served out of a monkey head? And my younger daughter's like, gross. My older is like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm into that. You know, and you know, there you go. But, but regardless, stop with some food and comics. It's, it's cringe. It's, it's super, like, I, cringe is overused. But absolutely cringe is the word. And then on top of that, don't double down on your cringe by by trying to do ethnic food and, and like lean into that shit. I mean, like if you were if you were exploring word, world cultures based off of Marvel comics, you would expect like all these cultures just sit around and have like weird food all the time. You know, one of the things you'll notice is, is if you go to uh, like China or Japan or Vietnam, like I have. Like you, the, one of your first questions is why the fuck is there so many KFCs in this place and subway? Like you go to Beijing and there's a subway there. You're like, what the fuck is that doing here? And why is KFC popular? And why, if you go to Japan, do they have like a, you know, a McDonald's where they dye the, the, the buns on the burger green and black at various times. And why is it that they sell a burger with like 12 patties? Like who's eating that? It's a heart attack burger. Like that, like they, anyway, that you you don't the, the 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 cultural representation of food in comics almost a hundred percent 
tells you that the person writing it has never traveled outside the U.S. in their entire life, ever. It's it's a it's a fucking joke. Anyway, well, I've talked a lot, so there you go. You got your money's worth of this video. Hey, um, just as a reminder, Project Champions Association, uh, sorry, Ascension. Ah, oh, shit, they're going to take money away from me now. Project Champions Ascension is the number one NFT system. I don't know what kind of NFTs they do, but I, I swear to God, they'll make you uh, absolutely erect if you buy those NFTs. So uh, don't forget, make Perch money. Go there. Tell them Perch sent you. Thanks for listening.